Hi, so we're going to talk here on our whiteboard about the math of standing waves. So, here we go. So we said a standing wave can happen when two waves of the same wavelength are moving in opposite directions through the same medium. But it doesn't always happen. What has to happen is for all the points of maximum constructive interference to line up the antinodes and all the places for maximum destructive to always be in the same spot, those nodes. And so there's only very particular geometry that allows that to happen. So remember, what we're gonna be looking with here is a wave interfering with its own reflection. Remember, reflection is always gonna be the same wavelength as the incident wave because one, the source isn't changing, so the frequency is not, and two, it stays in the same medium, so the speed doesn't change, and by the equation lambda equals the ratio of speed to frequency then, if those two things aren't changing, neither is the wavelength. So here we go. Just for sake of argument, to make it nice and simple, let's say we have a string of length L, right? So there it is, length L. <clears throat> and this string is fixed at two locations. So the boundary condition here, that's super important as we'll see later, the boundary condition is two fixed ends. So the question is, what or how much of a wave, quote unquote, fits nicely on that length such that we would always get the same parts of the wave at the same places at the same time? So as we saw in the <clears throat> uh, demos that we looked at, we have different what are called modes of vibration where that happens. So here's what we have. There's the equilibrium line. And the first mode, the n equals one mode, looks like this at one instant in time, right? So this is such that L is equal to how much of the wave? And if you said half a wavelength, you're right, because the two ends here, because they're fixed, have to be my nodes. And so we can't have those points moving, and the distance between two adjacent or uh, consecutive nodes is half a wavelength. Now, what I'm gonna draw here is a time lapse about what's happening with the medium through time uh, because this is a standing wave. So, we'll, so if this is t equals zero, a little bit time later, if we look at this, what we will see is that wave moving or that medium moving uh, back down towards the equilibrium position. At some point, that medium is going to be back on the equilibrium position. And then it's going to be below the equilibrium position. And then it's going to be back at its maximum, but a maximum negative. And then it would go here to here to here to here. So this would be a t equals half of a period. And then back there, and would oscillate back and forth such that this point was a node. This point here on the medium is the antinode, and that's the node. And so this is for the, what we're going to call, n equals 1 standing wave. Okay? Because we see here 1 half wavelength or one antinode with two fixed ends. So let's go through the mathematical progression of additional higher order modes on that same length of string. So what's the next bit that fits nicely on that length L? Well, that's gonna be if I get that, where L is equal to one wavelength, or as I'm gonna call it, two half wavelengths for reasons why we'll see hopefully soon enough. Now, just to convey something about this, this is where the medium is now. Where would the medium be half a cycle later? So I'm gonna draw that in a dotted line. I'm gonna use a different color. You don't have to use a different color, but I'm going to just for our sake of our notes. That's where the medium is half a cycle later. This is how we draw standing waves. 
we draw where they are at one point and draw where they are half a cycle later. And here you can see node, 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 antinode, antinode. And this is the n equals 2 harmonic or mode. Let me write that word, harmonic, because sometimes that n number is called the harmonic number. All right, so then let's keep going up the harmonics and we'll draw a couple more. So I'm going to draw the equilibrium line as a dotted line. And now what we're going to do is we're going to have the n equals 3. There we go. We draw where the wave is half a cycle later. So notice here L is equal to three half wavelengths. And this is going to be the N equals three. And once again, just show this. Hopefully you start seeing the pattern evolve. Draw where the wave is half a cycle later. Actually, let me just draw in my nodes and antinodes for all of these. Antinode, antinode, antinode. Uh, node, 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 node. Antinode, 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 antinode. Right here, L is equal to four half wavelengths. The N equals four. So hopefully what you're seeing here is with two fixed ends as the boundary condition, that the harmonic number n is equal to the number of half wavelengths, which happens to be equal to the number of antinodes. Now that's going to be very specific to this boundary condition, so we don't want to generalize yet. But for now, we can say that L equals n times one half lambda. So the question then is, what frequencies generate these standing waves? So therefore, there exist only specific, and that's going to become an important word for the last vocabulary word I'm about to define here, um, frequencies that cause standing waves on a material of length L with two fixed ends. So what are those frequencies? Well, we know that L is equal to N lambda over two. We also know that V is equal to F lambda. So if I rearrange these terms right now so that they're um, so uh, that this is equal to lambda. Actually, let me rearrange this so uh, this is equal to frequency because that's what I want. Frequency is V over lambda, right? And then lambda here is equal to 2L over N. And therefore, 1 over lambda is equal to N over 2L. And I wrote that because this is equal to V times 1 over lambda. Apparently, the frequencies that would cause standing waves on this medium are V times N over 2L. So F sub N is equal to NV over 2L with two fixed ends. That's our equation. So a couple things to note here. <clears throat> Notice that these are only specific frequencies because n has to be an integer. Since n is confined to only being integer quantities, there are only specific f's that work. All the other f's that would make n not an integer don't work and wouldn't produce standing waves. So what I need to do is define one last term. It's going to become an important term for us, and it's going to be something known as resonance. Resonance is a situation of maximally efficient energy transfer. So a standing wave is a resonance phenomena because, as we saw in those demos, when you hit these specific frequencies, the amplitude, which indicates the energy of the wave, got much larger than when you weren't at those specific frequencies. 
Let me give you another example of resonance. If you've ever been on a swing and you're trying to pump your legs in order to make it go, you know that if you pump your legs in some sort of haphazard fashion, that nothing happens. But if you hit the frequency of the swing with your leg pumps in the exact right way, you can continue to add energy to that system in a much more efficient way and go higher and higher and higher. So there's a notion involved in resonance about matching natural modes of vibration. So here, our string of length L that has a speed of V of wave along it that's determined by its tension and density has specific frequencies which you can as the source vibrate it at that cause it to um, uh, pick up energy in an efficient way. And if you use different frequencies that don't match these natural modes, you don't get an efficient energy transfer. One last thing I'll say about this for now is that um, when objects are naturally caused to vibrate, they vibrate in standing wave patterns because those are the most efficient ways. Here's an example of that, and I'll find a video to post the link with this uh, for you to watch. If you think about a guitar string, if you pluck a guitar string, how does it vibrate? Well, hopefully, when you look at a guitar string, it looks exactly like this vibrating back and forth like that. Now, the vibration is happening so quickly that you really can't see it. Now, you may ask, well, then if guitar strings always vibrate at this n equals one mode, who cares about the higher modes, right? When would you ever get these things? And so this is something that's hard to explain, but uh, those who play the violin or other stringed instruments might know what I'm talking about. When you use vibrato on the string, when you kind of pulse it like that, what you're actually doing is sending the wave from the N equals one mode into the higher modes. That's why vibrato sounds so interesting because within a short period of time, you get the string to emit not only its fundamental frequency, but also its higher harmonics, which cause that to be a richer sound. Now, don't worry, if you don't play violin, I'll show you a little clip of that as well. Um, but that's not something that I'm gonna expect you to know really or understand. For us, just knowing these mathematical patterns is important for being able to solve these problems. So <clears throat> from here, the next thing I'm gonna have you do is just a bunch of problems that is gonna be a work day. So I'm not gonna have a specific video for tomorrow because I'm gonna expect you tomorrow to work through a whole bunch of problems and then post your work for um, uh, commentary and feedback, not grading, but feedback at uh, the end of our time together on Thursday. So from now on, folks, what I'm gonna do is uh, all of our work is gonna be due at the end of our uh, second so if you look at Mr. Bonamo's schedule that he sent out, there are two times a day when I can uh, call meetings. And so our work will always be due at the end of those second meeting times, just so that you can have a consistent and reliable, predictable place where your work will be due. Additionally, I'm going to try and get everything posted two days ahead of time so that you can plan your own life accordingly. The only thing that's not going to be posted ahead of time is Google Form quizzes, which will be posted the morning that those things are due. Okay, great. I'll talk to you soon.